overall, experts are saying it's still quite okay. The economy is going quite okay, but it's going down, and we think it's going to be worse in six months from now. Okay, so there is, you know, if you like, pessimism creeping uh, into the world economy. People are worried about the future. So the, the world economy is moving towards this. It's clearly in a downswing, so slowing of growth scenario, and it may, might even be moving into a, a recession scenario. For the world economy as a whole, across the regions, it's quite gloomy. Uh, we have recovery in Latin America and in Africa, but the rest is a kind of cooling. And we are moving from blue and, you know, a very broad blue to a very broad red. And here you see Italy. I, I said I would start talking about Italy, so until early 2018, Italy was blue. Uh, and now it has turned deep into red. And I think Italy is an example uh, for the fact that economic policy is very important. Because, as you know, we've had a change of government in Italy uh, in the spring or in the early summer. And, uh, I mean, these numbers don't say necessarily that the change in government caused the downturn in Italy. But uh, if you look at the change in policy, it's quite clear that it has, in fact. So economic policy in Italy has produced, unfortunately, unwillingly, has produced this downturn. It's, it's deep in the red, but now the rest is also, the rest of Europe is also in the red. So we uh, need to keep an eye on that. Why do we have this cooling? So you see, across the board, if you abstract from, you know, Latin America, Africa, with a special cyclical situation, uh, clearly the world economy is cooling down. So we are not yet in a recession scenario, but uh, it's not uh, a boom scenario. And um, I, you know, I said it, I think that the key reason for the economy cooling down at the moment is really political uncertainty. We don't know where the trade war is going, but, but you know, if tariffs are increased further, uh, if trade is damaged, this will have a very negative impact on the world economy. And this is the hospitality sector, Gastgewerbe, uh, and you see that business climate in the hospitality sector is very closely related to overall business climate, although you, know, you see here the financial crisis in 2008, which had a big impact uh, on the tourism sector as well. And since then, you see more or less uh, you know, a certain fluctuation, but no clear trend. It's a stable environment. Uh, and we don't have a big downturn here at the end. So this is compatible with the answers we've just seen uh, with your assessment of, of the situation, which was fine. Mostly fine, okay? So the downturn we see in the economy as a whole, we don't see it yet uh, in the hospitality sector. Okay, hopefully it's not coming, but maybe it will be coming. And the reason is simply it's coming, currently it's coming primarily out of manufacturing. It, can, it will reach other areas of the economy, but it's not there yet, at least not in this state. Uh, let's take a look. What you see here is the current account between Europe and the US. Okay, so the current account is an account of all transactions, exports and impacts. Uh, exports and imports, and you see this from the U.S. perspective, okay, so these are U.S. statistics, uh, and um, Donald Trump thinks that American companies are earning less money in Europe than vice versa, okay, so he thinks European companies like Daimler or others are earning a lot of money in the, in the U.S. market by exporting to the U.S., and he thinks the Americans are not making money in Europe. If that was true, uh, the U.S. could win a trade war, he thinks. Okay, because they can put tariffs on a lot of products, whereas the Europeans will more easily run out of products to put tariffs on. Okay, that's the idea. But if you look at the statistics, you see that that's actually wrong, that uh, there is a U.S. current account surplus in bilateral trade with Europe. So American companies are earning 14 billion more in Europe than European companies are earning in the U.S., and I think Donald Trump hasn't understood this. Current account surplus of Europe relative to the US, it doesn't exist. American companies are earning more money in Europe, and that's why uh, the US cannot win a trade war. They will lose. The US is going to lose a trade war against Europe, and if they are rational, you never, you know, it's hard to say how rational is Donald Trump, but if he's rational, he will not start a trade war with Europe. This is China, this is totally different. So if you look at China, 
uh, economic relations with the U.S. are totally different. The Chinese are exporting more than 500 billion U.S. dollars in goods to the U.S. And the Americans are just exporting 131. And uh, you see that you can, you know, the services and primary incomes, you can basically forget about that. That's why the Chinese have a surplus, really, they do have a surplus of 350 billion. Okay, and that's a very bad situation in a trade war scenario because Donald Trump can put tariffs on these 500 billion, whereas the, the Chinese can only put tariffs on these 131. Okay, I mean, it's still stupid. I mean, even, even in that situation, it's stupid to wage a trade war because, I mean, American consumers are getting all these cheap Chinese products and benefiting from it. It's really stupid to, engage, to, to start a trade war in this situation, but it's easier, uh, you know, the damage you cause for others is, is greater than the damage you cause for you. Okay, that's why the Chinese are going to lose the trade war. They will make concessions. Okay, so the problem in Italy is not excessive spending of, of the government or whatever, it's a total lack of growth, a disastrous long-term economic performance. It's a deep structural problem, and you see some aspects here. We have a government here that has said, we don't want to cooperate with our European partners anymore. One, two, we will conduct an economic policy that is similar to the economic policy conducted in the 1960s. So rigid labor, introduce rigid labor markets, um, uh, uh, increase spending without regard to the deficit, and so on. And this is something that is not going to work. But Italy is a rich country. I told you, Italy doesn't have a lot of foreign debt. Italy is a rich country in that household wealth is higher, for instance, than in Germany and many other European countries. And this piece of information is enough to make sure there will be no help for Italy coming from the outside. There will be no transfers, at least. There may be liquidity help, but it is impossible to sell politically that there will be help for a, for, a, for a country which is richer, according to the available statistics, than most other countries. And I think uh, climate change is, but that you know b better than I, climate change is changing the industry itself. So ecotourism, uh, awareness uh, of, uh, of climate change issues, uh, are serious. I think the entire trend towards thinking about going less far, uh, doing tourism in your own country, uh, is uh, a consequence, uh, in fact, uh, of climate change. But at the same time, we need to see that there is a lot of interest in climate change. People are very worried about climate change, but they are not changing their behavior accordingly. Music